Hello and welcome to podcast.init, the podcast about Python and the people who make it great. When you're ready to launch your next app, you'll need somewhere to deploy it, so check out Linode. With private networking, shared block storage, node balancers, and a 200 gigabit network, all controlled by a brand new API, you've got everything you need to scale. Go to podcastinit.com slash Linode to get a $20 credit and launch a new server in under a minute. Finding a bug in production is never a fun experience, especially when your users find it first. Airbrake error monitoring ensures that you will always be the first to know, so you can deploy a fix before anyone is impacted. With open source agents for Python 2 and 3, it's easy to get started, and the automatic aggregations, contextual information, and deployment tracking ensure that you don't waste time pinpointing what went wrong. Go to podcastinit.com slash airbrake today to sign up and get your first 30 days free and 50% off three months of the startup plan. To get worry-free releases, download GoCD, the open-source continuous delivery server built by ThoughtWorks. You can use their pipeline modeling and value stream map to build, control, and monitor every step from commit to deployment in one place. And with their new Kubernetes integration, it's even easier to deploy and scale your build agents. Go to podcastinit.com slash GoCD to learn more about their professional support services and enterprise add-ons. And visit the site at podcastinit.com to subscribe to the show, sign up for the newsletter, and read the show notes. Your host as usual is Tobias Macy, and today I'm interviewing Murad Murafiq about Polyaxon, a platform for building, training, and monitoring large-scale deep learning applications. So Murad, could you start by introducing yourself? Yeah, sure. My name is Murad. Um, I'm the author of uh, Polyaxon. And before starting work, uh, start working on Polyaxon, I worked... Uh, couple of years in investment banking. Then I tried a couple of uh, startup ideas, did not work, and I decided to go back to work. And yeah, I joined uh, some uh, tech companies, some startups. And recently, again, I, I left my job and I'm working full-time on Polyaxon. I don't know for how long, but yeah, for now, I like it. <laughs> Take, taking a leap of faith. Yeah. <laughs> And do you remember how you first got introduced to Python? Yeah, um, I think I, uh, first uh, the first time I was introduced to Python uh, was um, back in 2010, I guess. Uh, it was through a colleague of mine. I was li- living in Luxembourg. Um, at, th- at that time, I was doing a lot of C and C++, uh, some MATLAB, uh, some Excel also uh, for, uh, for the front office, uh, for an investment bank. And my colleague was telling me about his experience writing some text mining scripts to extract sentiment that could be beneficial for trading. So I also started playing with the language. I quite liked it. And yeah, especially the uh, the numerical libraries. Um, I was like automating a lot of uh, reports and analysis in structured or an organized way. And by the end of that year, I also started working on two projects. One was related to credit derivative pricing and, tr- and rating. And the other one was a web app. So it was natural that I was using Python for both. And since then, I was like relying f- uh, on Python for many of the, the things that I'm doing. Yeah, it's always astonishing the breadth of things that you can do with Python and stay within the same language. And occasionally you may need to integrate with a compiled binary to get some performance improvements, but at the user level, it's all still just Python. Yeah, exactly. And can you start by giving a quick overview of what the Polyaxon project is and your motivation for creating it? So I started working on Poly. I mean, it was not called Polyaxon at that time. It was just like a couple of scripts that I uh, put together when I started using uh, TensorFlow in 2015. Um, uh, at that time, there was a small team uh, at Google that was working on um, uh, Scikit-Flow. Uh, it was something similar to Scikit-Learn, but for TensorFlow, I-, I liked it. And then they moved it inside TensorFlow as a country learn. And since then, it was like breaking every time they were like upgrading. So I thought that would build my own uh, small library. And yeah, uh, I've been working on that since then. Uh, eventually, it became uh, polyagonal because I started also like thinking about persistent experiments, reproducing them, how we can also like integrate learning in different kind of like um, environment like Docker or Kubernetes. And um, yeah, last year in September, I thought that maybe I should just work full time on Polyaxon and, and uh, basically try to realize the, 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 the vision that I have behind it. And in the context here, when you're referring to running an experiment, is that for just doing quick iterations on a machine learning model to figure out how best to approach a problem? 
So the thing is, um, when you are uh, building a, a machine learning or deep learning model, depending how big or complex the, the model is, there is a couple of things that you would be thinking about. Like, for example, you need first to, to write some code. And I, I assume that this code is uh, uh, version controlled. So basically, you are, you are tracking the, the changes of your code. And then this code is basically responsible for doing many things. You have like the cleaning of the data, data augmentation, extraction and engineering features, uh, doing some data exploration, uh, some analysis, and then you start thinking about the core machine learning, the core deep learning uh, model that you want to uh, that you want to train. And this this model need to load this data and start training, and eventually eventually doing some exporting some outputs logs, as well as other artifacts like model che checkpoints, weights, and so so on and so forth. So this. Um, this uh, basically this uh, process becomes more or less uh, tedious each time. So a lot of people start thinking about abstraction this uh, this uh, this process into something that could could be like where you could you can just like put some code and then it's running, it's doing all these kind of things without thinking about like I should do this first and then that's afterwards. Polyaxon, you mentioned Kubernetes and Docker. So wondering if you can describe a bit about how it's implemented and what the internal architecture looks like. So as I said, like um, a data scientist or a machine learning engineer um, basically writes code and try to, to train this code. Um, uh, eventually think the, the, the machine learning engineer also thinks about like um, restarting the experiments if uh, not satisfied, if she's not satisfied with the results, eventually also deciding and potentially also deciding to share the work with the rest of the team uh, to compare the results with pre previous experiments. Um, she might also like decide to retrain the model or uh, basically just like to pass the, the, the work to one of the, the, the teammates. But the problem is, um, in order to uh, restart an experiment or retrain the model in the same fashion, in the same way, it becomes really difficult because you have to handle environment variables, uh, dependencies, uh, environment setup, and, and so many other things. So the, the container technology gives you this ability to basically package everything and have it basically reproducible. So that's what, what, what I'm doing with the polyaxon. Basically, whenever a machine learning or a data scientist tries to train a model or run an experiment, basically polyaxon keep, keeps tracks of all the kind of like dependencies that uh, that are needed for for this uh, for for this job. So basically, we we uh, track the, co the 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 version of the code. Uh, we have a ver uh, version control system that is built in in uh, Polyaxon. We have a Docker uh, Docker registry that basically gets all the dependencies in a very simple way and builds a Docker image, run the experiments in a Docker image, and basically whether you want to do like a parallel experiments or distributed learning. We have also like a very simple interface that basically starts running on Kubernetes. Um, Kubernetes is very interesting because uh, it gives you the ability to basically redeploy the same uh, uh, um, the same structure, the same uh, the same infrastructure uh, on your computer or on a cloud uh, platform or basically on bare metal. So basically, you have this. Um, this huge engine that gives you, uh, that gives, that abstracts all the orchestration of your containers, of your resources. And yeah, that's, um, that's how basically, uh, the core, uh, of Polyaxon is working. <clears throat> what is it about deep learning workloads that makes it necessary to have a dedicated tool for deploying them, particularly for being able to manage a scale out environment to parallelize the experiments that you're running? Yeah, I think deep learning and machine learning in general is uh, maturing as we, um, in the last couple of years, but it's not as mature as a uh, software engineering. There's a lot of technical depths that gets introduced every, for uh, every project. So depending on the, the organization and also like the, the processes that they have inside uh, uh, for their teams, um, you will see like different kind of like structures, but in general, it's, it's not as, uh, as rigorous as a software engineer. So there's a lot of the dimensions uh, that's basically and a lot of technical debt that is related, for example, to data versioning, uh, technical debt that is related to configuration, hyperparameters, to, to code, to resources, for example, starting an experiment with all, the, all these kind of like dimensions is really hard. So basically, when you have someone building a deep learning or machine learning model or trying to solve uh, a problem within a company, 
in general, you have all this kind of like configuration and people like rely on documentation to reproduce the results. So if, for example, one of the engineers uh, leaves the company or basically is sick and someone is trying to pick up the, the work, it's really hard to reprodu reproduce the same results. Or basically, if you want to, you have, there's also like another problem, which is the staleness of the model. So basically, you need to retrain the models every now and then. And it's a lot of knowledge that is not distributed equally because basically people are relying on documentation, which is not always a, a good idea. So basically uh, with Polyaxon, we are trying to bring some kind of like um, rigor and some kind of like organization to um, deep learning and machine learning in, uh, in general. So that's basically the data science team can focus on the algorithm and then just have a system that basically tracks all these kind of dependencies that and um, gives them an environment that they would, they would be able to reproduce the, the, uh, the experiments and reach the same results uh, again and again. And a lot of times when data scientists are working through a problem and exploring the problem space, and then they generate a model, occasionally it's necessary for another engineer to take that model and then translate it to a different language or a different uh architecture or just modify the way that it's implemented to increase efficiency for being able to deploy it in production. But if the model is already contained within a Docker container, have you found that it's possible to just take the output of the experiment that you're using with Polyaxon and then just push it straight to production? No, oh, that's one of the things that Polyaxon uh, brings to the table. So basically, you don't care about like creating Docker images or anything. So you just uh, write code. And basically, you, you say that I want to run this code on Polyaxon. But in, in order to run this code, I need this, uh, these dependencies. Anything that could run on Docker is uh, basically something that we can use uh, on Polyaxon. So uh, basically, uh, if you have a code and you change it to, like, for example, fine tune some kind of parameters or change the, the structure of the code, you just like push the code and it's basically automatically uh, version controlled uh, in our system and it creates a Docker image and starts the, the, um, the um, starts the, the experiment. So basically what, what we are doing with Polyaxon is like we are abstracting more or less the data science workflow and simplifying it. But also we are allowing the, the data scientists to only focus and iterate on their algorithm without having to care about um, all these kind of like dependencies and uh, specific things to the experiment. So that's, for example, you just have a configuration file, a small YAML file, and basically everything is... Um, uh, everything is handled by Polyaxon, like the configuration, tracking, the resource uh, allocation, um, and also like the, uh, basically you have, um, you have an API, so you can do that also like program programmatically, uh, if you don't want to use the, the command line interface. So also like uh, Polyaxon allows like different ways of like scheduling the job. So that, for example, you can have also like um, experiments running uh, through um, uh, with uh, some kind of like schedule every, for example, every week or every two weeks. Or for example, if there is like some uh, new data in a database, there's like triggers being built right as we speak. Um, so that's basically you can train many models, uh, optimize many kind of like experiments uh, on a cluster by using the maximum resources, GPUs and, every, uh, and everything. So in a way, it sounds a lot like Polyaxon is aiming to be the continuous integration system for machine learning because in a traditional continuous integration system for a pure software project, you would want to be able to have those periodic builds to ensure that everything's operating properly and then also have the build on a code push but because of the added complexity of requiring the data to be present for machine learning workflows, I imagine that, that adds some complexity to a standard continuous integration system. Yeah, there's a, as I said, like there's like two kind of like faces, two kind of like dimensions. There's like the, the dashboard, uh, which is basically just like for viewing and uh, reviewing the experiments so that you have some kind of like knowledge. Uh, uh, distribution within the team. So basically you have, you are working on a project with the other team members. You are working on your own kind of like experiments and you want to compare their experiments and then the, the values and how these experiments are like different. What, what is the, uh, what make these experiments better than the other one in terms of like uh, hyperparameters and other kind of like configurations. And there's like this part of where you want to also like automate as much as possible. So there's like a, so the, the core model of machine learning is very small compared to all the, the, the entropy around like all the, the, the data management, the, 
configurations and everything. So what we're trying to do is basically use Kubernetes, which is really good for orchestration as a class uh, of the cluster, for managing the resources, for producing the same deployments uh, uh, everywhere, and for also for scaling. And with Polyaxon, we are adding a, a specific layer that is um, uh, that is trying to provide some kind of like reproducible and scalable machine learning and deep learning uh, on top of Kubernetes. So basically we have like authentication and the user management for projects, for uh, machine learning projects. And, and also like uh, having some kind of like modular kind of like um, uh, architecture where you, you can, for example, install only some parts of like the platform for doing a couple of things, for example, for the installing just a dashboard or having also like the, the, the engine, the runner, or having also like the pipelines for doing, for example, the, the whole continuous um, integration of the, the machine learning so that, for example, you can say, I want this experiment to run every Monday or run basically uh, whenever there's something, some, some triggers happening. And when you're doing those periodic builds, is it possible to set some sort of expectation of the output to ensure that it's staying within certain bounds so that you can be alerted if something is not operating as intended or whether there's new data that's causing the model to behave in an unpredictable fashion? So basically, with the, the the idea behind this pipeline is that it gives you more or less some kind of um, a higher like abstraction of doing whatever you want. For example, integration with the different kind of like environments. For example, Slack. So for example, you can say if uh, the the last experiment has um, accuracy or like a loss of this value or that value, uh, send me a notification. For example, or restart the training based on a different kind of like time range or whatever. So basically, with this kind of like pipelines, you can build different kind of like uh, workflows. Uh, and yeah, you have you don't need to to basically watch your computer like have some kind of, because right now what most uh, uh, people do is like they have some kind of like session somewhere on some kind of machine they have to SSH and check what's happening uh, if the uh, if the machine is gone basically the, the logs and all the artifacts is gone and that's what, I, what we're trying to do with the polyaxon is basically have all this kind of like components separated so that you never kind of you never lose like your logs, artifacts, outputs, um, and you have all these kind of like um, links between how the, the lineage basically of how this experiment started, why why it reached these results, and how to reproduce it. And going back to the step of building the Docker container to be deployed onto Kubernetes and run via Polyaxon. As somebody who is new to the overall technology of containerization, it can be difficult to figure out how best to approach encapsulating everything into one image and having a entry point that will function properly. And it sounds like you've attempted to abstract out all of those concerns of writing a Docker file, figuring out what needs to go into it, how it gets executed. But for somebody who it needs a bit more control, what are some of the tips or best practices that you found for creating containers that are going to be used to execute these deep learning or neural network type workloads? I mean, um, so how Polyaxon works is very simple, basically. You always have to provide some kind of like base image. If you're running your code on, uh, for example, Python 3 and you, you need to install TensorFlow, basically there's like a TensorFlow image. but Imagine, for example, you want to install it on like um, a Python three, for example, Docker image. You just provide the the base the base image, and then you have like some build steps that you need to provide. For example, pip install TensorFlow, and then the command that you want to run on your uh, on your code. So basically, you don't um, the the process of creating a Docker uh, Docker file is not uh, is very abstracted. That is it's it seems very simple. So you don't need to provide many things. You just need to provide a couple of uh, uh, dependencies that you want to install on some kind of like machines. And uh, going back to um, whether you you have like more, uh, whether you want to have more control over like the Docker images that are being built, of course you can create a, a very complex uh, uh, container. For example, you can upload it to some kind of uh, Docker registry and then you can reuse it uh, within Polyaxon. So it's not um, uh, mutually exclusive. How you can use like the, the if you are like very proficient or and you know what you want to do with the Docker image, of course you can do whatever you want, and then you can just like reuse it within Polyaxon. But Polyaxon just provides this very simple interface uh, between the user and Docker, so that it's not forcing the researchers to be proficient um, uh, DevOps people. So they can just run the experiment without like having to think 
too much about like how the specificities of uh, how um, a container is running. And in PolyAxon, you're supporting a number of different libraries for being able to execute these deep learning workloads. So I noticed that there are things like TensorFlow and Keras and Scikit-Learn. So I'm wondering if you can discuss some of the relative trade-offs or comparison between the available libraries or the available frameworks and also maybe some of the complexities that are involved in being able to support all these different targets. Yeah, so um, so basically since the platform is uh, built and relying on Docker to start like the experiments, we can basically support any framework. Uh, in fact, you can run anything that can run uh, on Docker. And that being said, uh, you, uh, for users who wish to run distributed training algorithms, that's when the complexity becomes really, uh, when the complexity increases, is basically we, we provide a very simple interface for distributing the work on a, a user-defined topology. For example, for running a simple TensorFlow model, you can run it basically with the um, on your uh, on your computer or on any platform but for example if you want to run a distributed training on tensorflow you need to build some kind of like topology and this topology needs to communicate like all these uh, these uh, virtual machines need to communicate be between them same thing for other uh, frameworks so what polyacton does is basically provide a very simple interface where you say for example i i, I need this uh, number of machines uh, and this is their role for example it should be a worker or parameter servers or uh, or master and we build this topology and basically you run your code within this topology and and polyaxon knows how to make this uh, this uh, mach uh, virtual machines talk uh, with each other and uh, reach some kind of like uh, results so basically what we uh, we provide a simple uh, interface for tensorflow as well as uh, horovod but also for PyTorch and MXNet. Um, there's a there's a, some um, trade-off between these uh, technologies. Some of them are, are well documented, and there's a lot of tutorials. For example, TensorFlow, and yeah, for others it's really hard. And like for many people, they don't. Uh, you need to, for example, for MXNet, you need to rebuild um, a Docker image with uh, and uh, basically have some kind of like configuration enabled. Both TensorFlow and MXNet, they have more or less similar kind of like architecture in terms of you have a master and you have uh, parameter servers and workers. For PyTorch, you have only like a master, which is the, uh, have a couple of workers and the master is the, the worker with rank zero and all the other workers are, are basically communicating with the, each other depending on how you want to do that. So basically in, in your code, you, you will have to specify what kind of like architecture you want to, uh, you want to build. Polyagon only builds the, the topology and provides it for the user. And for somebody who is getting started with Polyaxon, what's involved in setting up the integration with Kubernetes, assuming that they already have the Kubernetes deployment available? Yeah, I mean, uh, Polyaxon is uh, using uh, Helm charts. So Helm is the, the official package uh, manager for, uh, for Kubernetes. We provide like some charts. So basically the user just need to basically install Helm, install our, uh, our chart and the, the, the platform will start uh, working uh, on the top of, uh, uh, of Kubernetes in some kind of like namespace. Uh, that the user uh, also creates and yeah uh, from there you have you need also like our command line interface to basically talk with the with the api and from there everything just works in the next few versions we, we will have also like um, we will separate uh, the core runner which is uh, which requires kubernetes and the dashboard which is basically just uh, having an interface over what's project experiments, group of experiments, uh, user management, so that you can, for example, uh, install the, this dashboard on uh, a Docker Swarm, and you don't need to use our runner. You can run the experiments on your own cluster in a different way, and basically just upload all the data like related to each experiment. For example, you just have some kind of like uh, hooks that uh, you install within your, your code in your experiment, and they are just like uh, sending metadata about like the experiment so that you can have a dashboard without having to care if you want to run your experiments uh, with the, the polyaxon runner or with different kind of like engine. So that would let somebody use, as you mentioned, Docker Swarm or for instance, something like Mesos if they don't have Kubernetes and don't want to introduce that to their infrastructure. Exactly. So for example, uh, imagine you have Spark and you have uh, using the Spark uh, ML library and you, uh, you're running all your experiments within Spark and you want, but 
you still want to track how uh, how these experiments are running, what kind of like configurations they are using, what kind of um, um, versions the, of code they are using, and yeah, so basically you, you just install the the Polyaxon dashboard without, uh, and you run your experiments on uh, experiments on Sp uh, Spark, and basically you have all these kind of like APIs that call uh, Polyaxon API. Uh, so uh, to persist all the different configurations for each and every experiment so that you have comparison and uh, historical data over your machine learning uh, process. And if somebody has an existing workflow, an existing code base for a machine learning project, is there anything special that's involved in migrating to using Polyaxon? Yeah, of course you need to have, for example, it depends obviously on uh, what kind of, like, what parts you want to install. Uh, for example, you want to have only the dashboard or, or also like the, the runner. But in general, uh, at least uh, in my experience, um, most of like uh, machine learning and the data science team, they basically run experience or on their uh, computers or if they have some kind of like a company cluster where they are just like SSH into the machines and running the experiments. Uh, in that case, uh, if you are using only the dashboard, you have you only need to have like uh, our SDK installed in your code and then basically running, uh, whenever you run an experiment, it basically extracts all the metadata and send it to the dashboard. If you want to use the, the full platform with the, the runner and everything so basically you need to have the command line interface and then you have the specification files the yaml files where you say how you want to run your experiments over kubernetes and basically from there everything stays the same you don't even have to change anything within your code because everything is running within uh, polyaxon's uh, platform so it's tracks and it's, uh, yeah you can reproduce it whenever you want and as I was looking through the documentation, I noticed that there's a library implementation that you have as part of this project that looks as though it aims to abstract out a lot of the steps involved in just building a simple model so that it's easier for people to get started without having to dive into TensorFlow or PyTorch, etc. I'm just wondering if that's an accurate interpretation of the intention of that library, and if so, how somebody would go about getting started with that. I'm not like it's not um, very well maintained right now. So basically, it was um, uh, the idea behind the the, the polyaxon library is to have um, uh, describable describable models, so that you don't have to write even code for most of the the, the machine learning or the deep learning architectures, the the, the well known ar architectures, so that you just uh, specify uh, some um, YAML configuration where you say I want to use this model and this is the ar architecture in side the, the engine and then Polyaxon knows how to how to create the the whole model and train it and you mentioned that it's not currently being well maintained so that was just an experiment to see if it was viable but the main body of the work that you're doing now is more on managing the orchestration and deployment of the models yeah exactly and what have been some of the most challenging aspects of building and improving polyaxon whether from a technical level or from just raising awareness and making it understandable to people who are interested in using it i think there's like two two type of um, uh, users for polyaxon so the data science teams in general they, they know most of these problems and they if you work at any company where where, where you have at least like a mid to big uh, data science team you will find like at least some people working on some kind of internal tool to abstract this uh, this tra this uh, machine learning uh, and deep learning training kind of like workflow. On the other hand, you have also like the the single developers for this um, um, this uh, for these people. It's kind of like hard to convince them to use uh, tens uh, Polyaxon because it's a big kind of like infrastructure for running only like experiments of one user but for for uh, for anyone who wants to have like reproducible models for anyone who want who wants to have historical data about like their uh, their machine learning experiments it's i think it's necessary to have something comparable to polyaxon to at least track everything that is running and are there any particular features or improvements that you have planned for future releases of polyaxon or a particular direction that you're intending to take the project yeah, as I mentioned, uh, uh, having um, sep separating the concerns between the, the dashboard and the the, the, the Kubernetes um, runner uh, is one of the things that I'm working on. Uh, having also the pipelines uh, running and all the integration with different kind of like the databases, um, 
external tools like, for example, Git, uh, GitLab and Slack and many other um, uh, Trello and many other kind of like platforms. So that basically you can have this integration with different tools, also like triggering uh, experiments and uh, workflows. This is mostly like um, uh, what I'm trying to do also for... Uh, for authentication, a lot of people ask about like LDAP and how, for example, you, they can integrate easily with their uh, uh, with their systems for big companies in general. And if you were to start the whole project over again, do you think you would still use Python for building Polyaxon, or do you think that there's potentially a different language that would have made things simpler? Actually, when I started working on Polyaxon, at least like this uh, this current version, I had like very uh, small microservices talking. And I had some Microsoft services in uh, Go. Uh, I had like the streamer in uh, Node.js, but then the complexity became uh, sat like uh, uh, became really like hard to maintain for a single developer. That's why I decided to just go with the Python because it's more or less manageable for for me to have this kind of complexity. Uh, in the future, yes, uh, whenever there's like a, a microservice that I think needs to have uh, um, uh, where the performance is important, I think I will move it to, to Go, for example. But most of the, the other things, I think Python is a really good language for building a lot of things. And one of the other things that I found interesting about the project is that you're effectively wrapping the Kubernetes API with the Polyaxon command line interface. And I'm wondering whether you've faced any difficulties in terms of figuring out how that interaction should be structured, particularly given that you need to be able to reflect it internally to the Kubernetes API. Not really. I have like um, uh, one API that's accessing to the Polyaxon platform. It's basically through the specification. And from there, I have a couple of spawners that, that it's uh, framework dependent. And I'm building everything on the top of um, the Kubernetes uh, Python clients to basically just create the, the, the pods and everything. Uh, I know that a lot of other platforms, they create um, CRDs, uh, custom, uh, they customize, uh, customize the uh, basically um, deployment or something, but I think um, the the API, uh, the the Kubernetes uh, client, uh, Python client is uh, is good enough that you can create many kind of like uh, workflows and uh, c customizable workflows. Uh, so yeah, uh, in general, it's like one uh, one single uh, entry point uh, from uh, from the specification to the Polyaxon API, and from there, basically having different kind of Cus uh, customizable uh, uh, workflows for running different kind of like frameworks. And are there any other topics that you think we should discuss before we start to close out the show or anything that we didn't cover? Yeah, I think that I believe that uh, machine learning in the next two years will uh, keep maturing and this kind of, uh, th there will be a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, platforms that are similar more or less or trying to solve uh, at least some, some, some of these uh, problems that I'm trying to solve, re reproducibility in uh, machine learning. There is particularly, for example, the, the, data, the data management and data um, versioning problem. I think it's a very hard problem to solve. A lot of uh, companies are also trying to, to basically uh, abstract this uh, this is a huge area, this is a huge dimension of uh, not only deep learning, but also for in software engineering, what you have, uh, because you have uh, multiple access to, to the data, how can you version it, especially with the, the space and everything. Uh, hopefully in the future also, like for Exxon, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be able to, to have some kind of abstraction for, for data management and uh, data versioning. But apart from that, I think Polyax or, or any other platform is really important if we want to bring some kind of like rigor to the deep learning and machine learning space. All right. So for anybody who wants to get in touch with you and follow the work that you're up to with Polyaxon, I'll have you add your preferred contact information to the show note. And with that, I'll move us to the pick. And I know that we already spent a fair bit of time talking about Kubernetes, but I've been digging into it more recently. And so I'm going to pick Kubernetes as a platform because it really provides a great way of abstracting out a lot of the operational concerns of running software and creates a fairly robust contract between software engineers and machine learning engineers and the operations engineers who need to manage the underlying infrastructure. So I've been reading the O'Reilly book, Kubernetes Up and Running, and that's been uh, helpful to try and understand 
the concerns of Kubernetes and what that contract is. And also Kelsey Hightower has been doing a great job yeah. <laughs> of creating a lot of communications tools and creating a lot of resources for people who are getting into the space. And there's a great podcast that he was on recently on the Food Fight show where he was discussing that. So I'll add links to all those things in the show notes for anybody who wants to dig a bit deeper into Kubernetes. And cool. so with that, I'll pass it to you, Murad. Do you have any picks this week? I'm rereading actually uh, Schopenhauer recently. So <laughs> I started reading again Schopenhauer. That's what I'm doing uh, when I'm not working on Polyaxon or something related. Well, I appreciate you taking the time today to join me and discuss the work that you're doing with Polyaxon. It's definitely a very interesting project, and I think that it's a move in the right direction of making machine learning more repeatable and uh, easier to share around the business that you're working with. So thank you for that, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Have a nice day. Mm-hmm.